Awesome. Uh, so we created a habitat simulating terrarium. Uh, the goal behind this is to basically create an environment where uh, you can customize any number of factors that you need to in order to make sure that a plant has the proper living conditions to grow. Uh, the way we did this was by using an endangered carnivorous plant that's typically found in the Cascades called the Cobra Lily. Uh, we have a lot of different customizable features that you can use. There's a lot of sensors inside that can tell things like the temperature, the humidity, the soil moisture, uh, the water temperature, and all that sort of stuff. And in addition, there's a lot of actuators that can change that. Uh, so what you can kind of see here with a lovely interface is that as uh, different values kind of change throughout. It sends a signal back to the environment, back to the enclosure, that will then change things in order to make sure that uh, everything can stay in the proper ranges. Uh, and the idea behind it is that uh, hopefully as you know we go forward uh, there will be able to customize the different sensors, the different uh, parameters in order to make things a lot easier for hobbyists, for people trying to protect endangered plants, conservationists, uh, and hopefully do something to help against human uh, <laughs> environment destruction and climate change. Hi, we are the Rehab Ometer team. We have created a wearable system for tracking joint angles and ranges of motion during home exercise to combat the quantitative deficits currently found in home exercise program compliance and in home exercise sessions with physical therapists and trainers. So as you can see on here, we have created a system of wearables as well as a app that goes right on the user's smartphone. So we take in data from the wearables and we are able to calibrate and find the joint angles. On our wearable app, we guide the user through all the steps that they need from powering on the wearables to where to put them on their body to what exercises they should do and how to do them correctly with proper form. And then during the actual exercise, we display the angle as well as in a color bar. So we have a gray box that shows the user what angle their elbow should be at in this example on the upper arm. And this really gives patients an opportunity to take charge of their health care and their rehabilitation. It pushes the standard of rehabilitative care. It provides users with data on how to complete exercises properly and how to be compliant with their home exercise plans, which is really, really important. Physical therapy is a $40 billion industry, and honestly, physical therapy is something that impacts so many of us. So anything that can make us perform better and feel better sooner is awesome. That again? Yeah, you can start over. That's fine. Oh. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. Okay. Hello. This is Otter, the Overwater Traversal Information Recon System. It is this watercraft that our team constructed that is remote controlled and contains a sensing unit that goes underwater to monitor water quality information such as in this case temperature, conductivity, and pH. It's powered by a couple of 12 volt batteries in parallel and we have a fully waterproof container full of all of our electronics safely housed inside of this con uh, container here. Uh, we have closed uh, uh, cell foam inside of these uh, hulls to prevent any uh, types of water logging or sinking of the craft and we've tested it in pools as well as on the Charles River as you can see here uh, actually taking some of the data which we have some results like the temperature showing gradients over uh, different distances as it maneuvered around the area. Hi, so our capstone project is called the Smart Soul. It's a smart shoe insole that maps the pressure along the bottom of your foot while you walk or run. So just to give you a little tour of our project, this is our um, smart sole. There's an insole inside of this shoe here. And then this is our technology pack, which houses our custom PCB, as well as our microcontroller breakout board. Um, it 
then communicates over Bluetooth to our web app, which you can see here. This is a run that I did just a little earlier today. Um, and you can see the pressure mapping along my foot as I stride. So these are kind of three different images um, of a single stride. Um, and we have a legend that measures um, the force in Newtons. Um, this is a great product for preventative care. Um, it's really important to keep your, your gait uh, healthy, so that's what the goal of this product is. Hi, so this is Ride the Wave. It's a project to make um, oscilloscopes more accessible for people with visual impairments. So the way we wanted to do this is we have a visual representation of a, uh, let's say, a sine wave. Um, and we use this haptic feedback to actually feel where the signal is. So this enables, uh, enables users to actually feel where the signal is. So you can see here, it only vibrates when I'm actually on top of the signal. Now, it might not be easily apparent, but this is actually a fairly easy to use system. Um, and it basically lets you feel exactly where the, the signals are. And it doesn't have to be a sine wave. We, we actually have a function generator here and we can basically trigger it to use any kind of signal. Um, and this allows um, aspiring electrical engineer students who may not be able to use a regular oscilloscope, like the ones, like the traditional ones where you need to use knobs and look at a screen. So this basically just makes it a lot easier for people of all types to uh, really understand what those uh, electrical signals are like. Hi, we're distributed systems for localization and mapping. Um, and so our project involved two radios which communicate with each other by sending a message back and forth and then measuring the time that it takes for that message to travel there and back. Using that plus the speed of sound, we're able to know the distance between two devices. With that, we have a demonstration right here where we can, a device can know whether it's on the left or the right. Left or the right. And then also, if you take a look, we can have the distance as I keep it very close. And then as I walk further away, the distance starts to increase as I move further and further away. What we ended up doing with that is we took a set of devices at known locations, one meter apart, and we essentially built an inside out version of the GPS system. Using that, I was able to walk around my garden and get very accurate data uh, of my travel around our back garden down to an accuracy of about one foot over about 30 meters. So thank you very much, that's our project. Hi, so our project was pretty much developing a proof of concept for a, a pedestrian detection and avoidance robot. Um, basically we simulated this on the TurtleBot with the Kabuki base using a RP LiDAR and uh, Connect and uh, the Jetson TX1 which has a built-in GPU in order to run our computer vision stack. Basically, uh, as our board will show, we use object detection here using YOLO, which creates bounding boxes over people. Those bounding boxes are then displayed on the map, which is in this pretty low quality picture here. But essentially, this little uh, smudge here is a person, and this is the robot, and on here, there's also the local and global plan. Hi, uh, this is our terrestrial roving autonomous scrap harvester. Um, it is a lightweight implementation of picking up trash in an area. It's comprised of three stages. First is mapping. Uh, we use a visual slam to create an area and using computer vision and a convolutional neural network, we detect pieces of trash. After we have a map with those pieces of trash, we have to navigate between those two pieces of trash. Um, we use adaptive Monte Carlo localization to do that and then we path plan between each piece of trash. Once we have go get to each piece of trash, we pick up the trash using a greedy pickup, which identifies the piece of trash using our convolutional neural network, YOLO, um, turns towards the piece of trash, turns on our motor, and our custom-built collection mechanism will go and pick it up. What my group and I have created here was a soft robotic animatronic mouth capable of human speech synthesization. Unlike more advanced robots currently today that are animatronics, where the sound is generated from a speaker independently from the motion of the robot, the synthesization of speech comes straight through from the lungs into our own vocal folds through the motion of the mouth. The motion of the mouth distorts the sound and makes it into the synthesization of the sound. We um, really enjoyed making this project and kind of um, exploring our interests since we were all electrical and computer engineers. This project had a lot of mechanical components. We made 
a lot of different molds and we're able to prototype a lot of different instances of it that ultimately allowed us to make the perfect design for this robot and really recreate the human vocal system in the most biological sense possible. Hi, our project was the Mayo arm. We control the robotic arm through EMG, which is the electrical activity produced by muscles as they flex. We were able to record EMG from a number of muscles in the upper arm and the forearm, and then use a machine learning approach combined with a simpler approach for the biceps and triceps to dexterously control a robotic arm that we constructed in real time. Hello, so our team created an ASL translator app on, the, on iOS. Um, we chose a subset of 13 terms, which you can see here, which we felt like would be useful in common conversation or in urgent situations um, that would be helpful. And uh, here you can see our app. We have uh, instructions and the record video page. So basically, on the app, uh, a user can record about a six-second video of them performing a sign. And we, um, the video gets sent to our server on, in uh, AWS, which runs pose detection on the data and then returns data to input into our model, um, which will return an English term, that, which will be displayed on the um, application screen. So this project is called Notice, and it is a project focused on creating a better ventilated area to reduce the transmission of COVID uh, in this environment that we live in right now. So it comprises of three sensor systems. Two are indoor, one is outdoor, and it compares the values of carbon dioxide inside of that room to determine if there are more people entering into a room and when it realizes there are more people entering into a room, it will activate this fan here to increase the airflow from the outside to the inside to further reduce the amount of transmissible viruses within the room. So our project is the simultaneous localization of wildlife radio tags. What that basically comes down to is very high frequency radio telemetry has been around for a while, but it's usually used to track one animal at a time, usually from a plane, where the operator has to listen with headphones and point an antenna at the direction they think the animal is in. So our idea is to have numerous transmitters that basically they can operate at different frequencies. This one's at 75, this one's at 76. The range is suffering right now. That's been the biggest issue with the project, but the idea is that you could have as many radio tags as you want operating at different frequencies, and then you'll have a receiver that can segregate those free or those signals by radio frequency, and then plot out the uh, a heat map of the data of the or the of the signal strength. So you'll see like one species of animal is right here, and one species of animal is right here when the drone flies over.